today we're launching the official launch of the Safe at Home program, which is an address confidentiality program to protect Tennessee victims of domestic violence, rape, human trafficking, stalking, and other related crimes from their abusers by keeping their address concealed from certain public records. Today, Tennessee joins 37 other states who offer an address confidentiality program to keep victims of domestic violence who relocate safe from their abusers. According to Tennessee Bureau of Investigations, 18 domestic violence related murder victims in 2017 were repeat victims or had reported domestic abuse before their deaths. 2,169 domestic assault victims in 2017 were repeat victims. And under current Tennessee law, most state or local government records are considered public and available for public review, including records such as voter registration and other documents and information. These victims of domestic violence who are trying to flee abusive relationships are vulnerable because these public records make it easy for abusers to track and find their victims. But thanks to this new law passed by the Tennessee General Assembly overwhelming support and with key support from our sponsors, Senator Brian Kelsey and Representative Andrew Farmer, will now have a program where they will be able to receive the substitute address to use these types of records, keeping their physical addresses confidential. Well, unfortunately, we have a huge problem with domestic abuse here in Tennessee, and we've got to do uh, everything that we can to protect our victims. And uh, it's extremely important to, uh, to ensure that the victims of domestic violence know that they can be safe and safe at home, and that's why we have this Safe at Home program. The General Assembly has done a lot to help victims of domestic violence over the last several years. you want to talk about that at all, what you've done? And I was proud to work with Governor Haslam to pass the Public Safety Act of 2016, and that was really the first time that we said, uh, this is serious and uh, we're going to treat it as a felony uh, in terms of repeat uh, domestic abusers. And uh, so we've addressed the side, the offender side, but we've got to do more on the victim side. And that's why I think it's so important that we have the safe at home uh, legislation that's being implemented now. Good. What would your message be to victims um, of domestic violence about this program? Should, would you encourage them to participate? Yeah. I certainly hope that uh, victims of domestic violence can find out about this program and will participate in it. And we've got to get the word out there for all victims that we now have uh, a remedy in place to help you and to help you remain safe. I've been in and out of the courtroom for the past 10 years, going on actually 11 now. Uh, I've been in contact with the district attorney's office. I've been in contact with victims themselves, with victim witness coordinators. You know, on average, a victim is abused seven times before they ever even come out and report it to the public. So I understand how important it is. I understand how volatile the situation is. But people are, are murdered and killed. It's usually in a domestic situation. So anything we can do to help these men and women, kids they're a part of in a domestic violence type of situation, we really need to give them support on the front end as well as the back end. Protecting their identities is one of the best ways we can do that because we have stalkers, we have abusers, and they won't stop until somebody dies. So you encourage um, victims to participate in this and, and go forward and sign up for the program? I wholeheartedly encourage victims to sign up for this. I think we have the parameters in place to protect their identities. I think we have the infrastructure in place to give them the support on the back end they need and keep them safe.